thinking 50 in my, in my head. It's worth 150? No, I'm thinking 50,000. And he wants 170? He says he's got 170 into it, yeah. And, oh, and okay. I might be off a little bit. Like, I haven't seen it, so it might be worth 110. Okay, well, that, that's a big spread, though, Mark. Huge, right? <laughs> it's huge. a huge spread. So when you get somebody who has unrealistic expectations, how many people here have met this crazy person? I have. Sure. Yeah, you bet, all the time. Okay, remember, in sales, we can get a yes when we're, we, we love the yes, right? Who loves yes? Everybody loves yes, right? It means we're going to go to the bank, get a contract, get another point. Something good's going to happen. Okay, we can get a quick no if we do it right. Nothing wrong with no as long as you don't waste a couple hours doing free consulting. We can get an I'll think about it when we screw up. We're not allowed to accept I'll think about it. What do we say when someone says I'll think about it? You're not allowed to think about it. You're not allowed to think about it. And I showed you last week how to handle it. And the fourth thing you can get is a lesson. What am I always telling you about that we have to do every day? We have to practice. When I say speak to five people a day, five prospects, five uh, Starbucks clerks, speak to five people a day, hopefully five people in business, cold calls, warm calls, follow-up calls. Sometimes you're not going to, you know, Mark, in your heart of hearts, you're not going to sell that person today, right? Not today. So have some fun. Well, with it. There is, is some motivation there. I asked him, why is he selling? Why now? What's, what's, the urgency said, well, I'm on a fixed income, I'm retired, I'm getting squeezed, I can't afford it anymore. Oh, okay. You know, you know what, Mr. Hoffman? It, if it's 170, my comps here say it's 50, uh, but you need 170. Why don't you make it 200 or 250 then? Well, why not ask for a million? Well, why not? Yeah, I have to ask for more. Somebody sooner or later. There's a lot of crazy people out there. Maybe somebody will buy it, you know? There's no word. And then you go into your system. And you say, you mind if I ask you, why are you selling this? How long have you been in this home, Mr. Hoffman? 11 years. Stay another 11. Sounds like a nice home. Friend, nice neighborhood. No pit bulls next door or anything. I can't afford it anymore. I'm on a fixed income. Ah, what are you going to do? You know, things like that happen. You, you, you yeah. have, you know, you can't. <laughs> so what you do is you get a lesson. Use your, practice your skills of question. I with stroking and nerve, you're not gonna close them, so you might as well have some fun with it. Even record it, if it's loud in your state, and use that recording for YouTube marketing or something. I've got some crazy people on some of my YouTubes. I had one lady, it's, an, it's a YouTube from years ago, and she didn't own the house and she was trying to sell it. Anybody ever <laughs> seen that video? I, I mean, it was a lot of fun. It was, I knew right away it was a scam or something. Anybody here? What did I, I got a phone call uh, this week from uh, somebody trying to re raise money for the uh, police, uh, fraternal order of police. Okay. I, I wasn't near a recording though. I love recording those because they're scams, you know. Actually, they, you, you do have one like that up. I have one. I have one. I love that where I get on the guy one and I say, well, what's your, you know, tax ID or your nonprofit identification number? And, he, can't, he, wouldn't, he couldn't answer that. You hear those little, sometimes when you hear silence, when somebody can't answer a question and there's that little, where you hear the crickets, what does that kind of tell you? What's even worse is he told you he had to go back into his script. Yes. <laughs> it's a, if you can find that one, put it in the Skype uh, later today, uh, uh, Sean. So I'll let okay. you listen to that. When, when, somebody, when you hear silence sometimes, that means they're either thinking, they're going back in the memory chips in their brain to think of either a, an answer or a lie, okay? Most people, when they're telling the truth, are they spontaneous? No. Yeah. 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 When you're yeah. telling the truth, it comes right out, don't, right? Someone says, what's your birthday? Oh, you know, December this, what, you know? Well, the truth is always easy to find. The truth is always easy to find. So when they hesitate to answer a question right away, what should be going on? What, what, what resonates in your brain? What are, you say, what are you saying to yourself? Here comes the bullshit? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Bailey. Bailey, was that an exercise or a hand up? I was saying it's like an alarm bell going off in my head. It's like BS, BS, BS. Yeah. yeah. They're either thinking of a lie or honestly, maybe they don't remember. You know, something, I like that. You're, you're listening to the patterns, their patterns. to get, And what we're always trying to do with a prospect is get them emotionally involved, get them talking, and get to the truth. Most people do not want to reveal the truth initially with a stranger, right? Right. 
It always comes down to that. We're trying to, we're trying to break down those barriers as quickly as possible. Oh, Mr. George has, has, has entered the building. Good morning. Good morning. Good, good. All right, who else, who's got something else here? Open forum time. Questions, role plays, success stories. Who's got a success? Money, contract, something. I had a pitfall, Claude, I'd like to share. I, I bought a property from the auction 